want to continue with the military experience as the 187th, including me, was sent from uh, Papua, Japan to the prison island and on up to the front line. One of the things I forgot to mention in talking about the prison island situation was that Captain Hawk had the boys build a privy up on the hill where he could look down on us while we were there waiting to do our duty as the compound was cleared. Everybody called it the Hawk's Roost. And I'd been a little disappointed after the captain had reported even though I agreed, and everybody agreed, what a terrible thing that a good commander, Captain Miller, had been replaced by a terrible commander, it still kind of bothered me that it didn't seem to me that Captain Miller was doing much other than just kind of watching this guy do his job. Well, the day came when I was informed that the 187th was going to move to the front line and I was to take a group and go up and prepare a bivouac area outside of Tegu Air Force Base. Okay, so I'm going to leave the next morning and before you leave you have to turn in your report showing that everything's in order on the controlled substance, morphine. So I put my records together Captain Miller came around that afternoon, early evening, and said, uh, Lieutenant, have you turned in your uh, records? Are, are they in order? They're in order, sir, but I haven't turned them in. He said, well, let me look at them. So hopefully they're in order so that uh, Captain Hawk won't be on your back. I appreciate that. But I also wanted, gee, does he think I didn't do the job right? Well, he brought them back after a while and said, they're perfect. Go ahead and turn them in thought nothing of it, except that, hey, that was neat that he's protecting me, and I didn't get any chewing out or anything when I turned him in. Left the next morning, we go up, prepare the area, oh, hey, how nice. Right next to the Air Force Base, of course, was the Air Force barracks and so on. My gosh, they let me and my men come over. We got to eat, sit down and eat at a table. Not only that, we got to use real potties and drinking fountains. We still went back and slept on the ground, but we got to see that, whoa, these guys have pretty doggone decent beds. No wonder I advise my boys, if you got to go, join the Air Force. Of course, they joined the Navy. Well, the outfit came on up. Moved on out, and my boys and I got left to clean up the mess. I don't know, day, two, three, later, get up to the front, go to the company area, and I mean to tell you it is a place of buzz, 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 happy buzz. Kind of sad, but the buzz, the happy buzz was because they said, Captain Hawk has been placed in house arrest in his tent. Captain Miller went to the brass above us and had the evidence that he's a drug addict. Oh, and then that very evening, lots more excitement. Captain Hawk shot himself through the ankle. I never saw it, but that was what I heard. Not the dumbest doctor. You need Drugs? You're desperate? But my God, with a 45? Ooh! I can't imagine what that did to his ankle. And of course, he was evacuated and gone. I suppose maybe he beat the rap. I don't know. But I do know that Captain Miller was again our commanding officer. And Captain Miller was on a crusade to prove. Black men aren't cowards. Been lots of rumors that during World War II, some of the black outfits boogied out, ran, took the position of, hey, the way we're treated, why do we give our lives? Others fought like demons, I'm sure. But those rumors were persistent. And Captain Miller obviously was determined to prove that, hey, 
this black man's no coward. And he set up a system where he could go out into no man's land and he fixed it where the rest of us got our little turn at it so that it wasn't for him. It was just part of getting us ready if we had more active combat that we'd be hardened a bit, not be afraid. By the way, I had Captain Hawk's pearl handled at the inlays of the naked Marilyn Monroe pistols for a short time. I thought about trying to keep them and bring them home as a souvenir, but I'm a chicken. I just said, ooh, I'm not doing that. So I made known I don't want them, and I don't remember who said I do. They were beauties, and she was sure a pretty girl. Anyway, the other thing I want to say is that the front line was situated in such a way, at least where we were, that we held the low ground, the enemy held the high ground. And if they wanted to shell us, we were already zeroed in. I do not know if it's true or not, but the guys told me that, yeah, it's lucky that we were coming in the day we came in because evidently the intelligence had said we'd be coming in the day before and a whole lot of rounds landed in our company area the day they thought one company was leaving and we were coming in. If it was true and if they had had the right day there would have been fatalities because you can't move in or move out and be very well protected. I'll have more to say about the front later, but that's enough for this time.